Coming up on this episode of the IoT Inc. Business Show. The smart home or connected home makes life good. It makes it comfortable. But business models aside, today's big question, at least for me, is if it really is a do-it-yourself market as it's currently being betrayed. Not so easy to install, not so easy to repair. In this episode of the IoT Show, I break down the connected home, I reminisce about the Jetsons, and I provide my opinion of if the DIY approach is the right way to go. All this and more on this episode of the IoT Inc. Business Show. The people, the business, and the technology of the next generation internet. This is the IoT Inc. Business Show. And now, here's your host, Bruce Sinclair. Hello and welcome to the IoT Inc. Business Show. This show is for business leaders and managers employing the Internet of Things for their business or the business of their customers. I'm your host, Bruce Sinclair, and I interview the industry's leading authorities to find out how they use IoT to improve business and create value. If you like this show, subscribe to it on iTunes and go to iotinc.com to check out my complimentary articles, videos, meetups, and webinars. You may have noticed that my last few solo podcasts have been more like an overview, just at the surface of the water rather than doing the normal deep dive. Well, this episode is no different. I've been asked to do more episodes for newbies, and I'm kind of enjoying it. Hopefully, even if you're a hardcore listener, you're getting value from them. Hope you enjoy the episode. Pop quiz. Where did George, Jane, Judy, and Elroy live? And if you need a hint, their dog's name was Astro. Well, the Jeffersons lived in the connected home in the Skypad Apartments in the year 2062. You know, what I love most about the show, The Jeffersons, is that it captured the spirit of the time. There was this optimism. There was an optimism about the future, and there was an optimism of how technology was going to make life good. And in some ways, it predicted technology pretty well, including the connected home. Well, what we have today is not quite the connected home of 2062, but our homes are coming alive with technology, Internet of Things technology. This technology is available pretty much anywhere today. Go into your local big box hardware store, such as Home Depot here in the U.S., and you're going to find a mega-sized aisle dedicated just to it. Today, I'd like to discuss the connected home and the three ways it can make life good. Life can be good through connectivity, life can be good through security, and life can be good through energy. Let's first talk about connectivity. Picture this. I'm not in my relaxed clothes like I'm usually wearing, but I'm in my boss suit. I'm on the 23rd floor of a sky rise office building in the center of Tokyo. With me in the conference room are around 10 to 12 Japanese businessmen. They come from the company KDDI. KDDI is very similar to AT&T here. They're all surrounding me and they're looking at my phone. My phone happens to be an iPhone 1. And on my phone, I'm pressing a screen and I'm turning on and off lights. I'm turning on and off fans, which were supposed to represent air conditioning, and I'm turning on and off computers. This is all happening in a room that we call the Spooky Room. So when I was CEO of a company called Hexago, the Spooky Room was on our ninth floor in our office building in the center of Montreal. We called it Spooky because at any time there may be me or other salespeople demonstrating our connected home platform. Now, what we sold was a platform that allowed companies like KDDI, AT&T, who are both customers, to provide smart home or connected home functionality. It was mostly along the lines of doing 
getting through the NAT. And if anyone's familiar with local area networks, a private a private NAT network, which is what you get in the home, is kind of tricky. So we use IPv6 to do that. But in any case, I'm pressing the screen and I'm turning on the fan in the spooky room. And it was crazy. As you walk by, things are happening at any time. Now, this happened in 2008. So eight years ago, I was demonstrating connectivity. Now, these products are the fan, the air conditioner, the lights. They're all available today. And I want to go through three of them that, from a connectivity point of view, are pretty popular in the smart home space. I've talked about this one a number of times in different talks, but I love the Samsung uh, Family Hub Refrigerator. So it's a connected refrigerator, and it does a few things, and it may sound kind of funny, but I can picture myself, if I was single maybe, and lots of money to have one of these type of fridges, so it had to be before I was married, popping open my phone, and just like I did when I was in Japan, looking inside, not the spooky room, but inside the refrigerator. Kind of cool. Um, it does other things. The connected refrigerator, it will. It has a big screen on it, and it'll give you recipe recommendations. And at some point, it'll recognize the food that you put into your fridge and be able to give you recipes based on that food. Another category is connected lights. Connected lights, ah, you know, being able to turn them on from a distance sounds pretty good. Maybe you're away from your home and you want to make it seem like you are at home. Uh, me, I'm not into really changing the lights in, in my house into like a disco style. But one use case did come up from KDDI, and that was the case of young uh, women who are working late and they go home and generally to an apartment in Japan and they don't like to go into a dark a dark apartment. So being able to turn on the lights in advance with their smartphone again, just like I was doing, was, was something that was appealing to KDDI. Another category I like, at least here in the US, it's really important, is the connected garage door opener. A big thing is, did I forget the garage door? Did I leave it open? Now, true story, we're here and my family's all asleep it's about 3 a.m. in the morning, and I hear this loud knock. I don't know how many times it took, but it eventually woke me up and my wife. A loud knock, a loud knock at our door. I look at the clock, and it's about 3 a.m., like I said. So who the heck would be so forcefully knocking at that time in the morning? So I go downstairs, I look through the peephole, and there's a police officer there. The police officer... <laughs> came to inform me that my garage door was open. All right, so that might be a silly example, but checking the garage door, and, I've, and when I've talked to people about this, they've even said they've even driven home again just to make sure that they've closed their, draw, their garage door. So a connected refrigerator, connected lights, connected garage door, these are just nice things that just make things comfortable. Now, I'm not sure if having three different apps really constitutes a connected home. I would like there to be some integration between, behind, between them, but it's what we have right now. So besides connectivity, the connected home also provides security. Now home security has never been as easy or as effective. When I was doing this traveling, a big part of our business when I was the CEO of, of Hexago, that then became GoGo6. Um, was in Asia. So I did a lot of traveling in Asia. At that time, I had a young family, and the kitchen is somewhere where everyone kind of uh, got together. So when it was breakfast my time, early my time in Tokyo, let's say, it would be around dinner time in Montreal. So we had a camera set up in the kitchen. It was an IP camera, same thing, same as the demo, except for on my phone, I could then click into the IP address, through the interface, so it didn't, it wasn't an IP address, and then take a look and see what's going on with the family. I loved it, but unfortunately, most of the time when I looked to see what was happening, all I saw was the side of the kitchen, the kitchen wall. Unfortunately, my wife did not like the concept of me spying on them. <laughs> I liked it, 
but uh, she considered it spying. So it's not for everybody, but connected or home security cameras are or connected cameras are high resolution now. Uh, they're full motion. You can save. You can trigger the saving of images based on sensors, and they can also tell whether it's pets. So they do also learn. Saves it on. It can save it in the cloud, so you can review it later, and and you can review it at any time, just like I was doing eight years ago. So for some people, this is this is really useful. The connected lock I talked about last time, and we had uh, Nate on from August locks, and these are cool too. I mean, being able to remotely open your lock for somebody, let's say to let your neighbor in, uh, maybe to feed the cat, or maybe it's more like one of your children forgot their keys, or being able to give a temporary key maybe to your neighbor so they can come in and feed your cat when you're away from, from the home, maybe on vacation, is kind of useful. And coming up to the door, having geofencing, being able to walk up to the door and have it just automatically open, that's pretty nice too. Maybe my favorite category of, of connected home products is the connected doorbell. And you may have heard of these. So someone comes up to your door, either ring the bell or they knock because there is um, sound recognition. And immediately what will happen is you'll get a message and you'll be able to get a video feed of who's in front of your door. So whether you're inside, and sometimes, at least in my neighborhood, I'll get unwelcome visitors, not, not from a dangerous point of view, but just that they're trying to sell something. And it'd be really nice to be able to talk to them, which you can do with a connected, with a connected doorbell from when you're within the house and just say, no, not interested, instead of maybe not answering the door at all, which is sometimes what I do. But even maybe more interesting is being able to talk to somebody when you're not at home and they're at your door, whether that is going to be for delivery purposes or whether that's a neighbor. It's, it's pretty comfortable as well. So, but I consider it more of a security product than anything else, just being able to see who's at the perimeter of your home. Now, after connectivity, which extends your reach into the home and safety, which gives you peace of mind, we have energy. Now, energy, there's a number of different ways that we can use IoT to save costs. Obviously, the connected thermostat, the Wi-Fi-based thermostat, made famous by Nest, is really useful. It's useful now. Whether it's worth 10 times the cost of a non-connected thermostat, I think you have to be the judge. And if you want to hear more about that, you can listen to a previous podcast of mine, Trading Data for Dollars is the name of it. But in any case, the, the, the Wi-Fi-based thermometer learns your climate needs. It knows when you like the house warmer. It knows when you like it colder. It knows when nobody is in the house. It can predict when people are coming home. And it uses a little bit more intelligence um, to, make, to, make, to make you comfortable again. And I think this is kind of a common theme that's going throughout. One of my very first meetup guests... And perhaps it actually was the first meetup guest. And we've had, I think, 20 odd meetups so far in the Silicon Valley. It was from a company called Ohm Connect. And Ohm Connect um, provided an app that effectively told you from the utility company, in this case it was California util uh, Utility Company, so PG&E, an app would tell you when pricing was high or when electricity pricing was low. And as you may or may not know, uh, utility companies pay different amounts of money for the wholesale electricity that they purchase. And so if you are to use electricity when it's lower, then in, in fact, your bill is lower. So what Ohm Connect did, which I thought was pretty interesting, is just with this free app, it was able to save you money. Now, you could go even further, and instead of it saying, oh, you may want to turn off the dishwasher right now because you're in a peak a peak time and turn it on again in an hour, if you have a connected dishwasher, then it can actually, if you set it up, it can actually control the dishwasher for you. So that's a good way of saving money, and effectively it's around $200 a year, um, and so is that worth it? Well, they also have this system that allows you to pass it directly to a charity or maybe your, your children's school. So that's kind of interesting. 
Another one that I like a lot, and maybe it's because we have this big drought here in California, is connected sprinklers. There's nothing I, well, there are a lot of things I, I dislike more, but I don't like seeing sprinklers going off and watering lawns in the middle of the heat when the sun is at the hottest time. It makes no sense. A big part of it's evaporating. It's not getting into the ground. So connected sprinklers, they, they will, there's different varying variations on complexity, but some of them will measure the moisture in the ground. Some of them will measure the, the, the weather outside and then water your lawn or water, if it's a commercial, you know, water the commercial lawn whenever it makes most sense. Those are the three main categories of functionality for the smart home. Connectivity, safety, and energy. And they, they're not quite the Jetsons. They're not quite the future home of 2062. But again, I think they make life pretty comfortable. But let's discuss the business. Now, business models aside, if you want to, again, get into the business model of consumer IoT products, you can listen to two podcasts ago. And again, the name of the podcast was Trading Data for Dollars or something like that. But I'd like to discuss more the point of do-it-yourself versus professional installation. Pundits will say the connected home is built on a shaky foundation. It's difficult to install. It sometimes breaks down. So the question is, is it more effective from the point of view of the area underneath the curve to have lower price, an overall lower price solution that is done by the consumer, so DIY, do it yourself, or is the area under the curve, and this area is measuring, the area is measuring revenue. So is the area under the curve larger if you have a professional installer or a system integrator or a home automation service provider? I think so. I think for most people, they have a hard enough time getting their wireless router set up, let alone connecting multiple devices to their wireless router, provisioning these devices. Even for the somewhat technical, and I've set this type of equipment up in my home years ago, so maybe it's improved, but it's not that easy. And even though there are large volumes of it available in the hardware stores, or wherever you buy this equipment online, I kind of think that this is something, at least today, that is better handled by professionals. I was recently asked to speak at the best gig possible. So being Canadian, I'm a big hockey fan. And so I was asked to speak at a Dallas Stars hockey game, <laughs> not in the arena, although that would have been interesting. Um, but it was in a suite, and this is uh, one of my uh, customers or clients, and they invited a number of their potential clients who they're trying to move over to IoT. One of those clients was a home builder. Now, they're very high-end home builders, and they said they are expanding like crazy. And the biggest differentiator for this business was the smart home capability was installing all of these equipments from a connectivity point of view, from a safety point of view, and from an energy point of view. Business was booming. Now granted, this was only at the very high end of the market, but I think until the technology gets easier to develop, that this is probably a better market strategy even though it has its challenges, and I'll say its challenges today because I think these are going to, over time, be gone, that is, the installation and, and the repair. But even though it has its challenges, I think the connected home still makes life pretty good. And the Jetson's ethos of technology making us comfortable, it's our ethos. But the Jetson's connected home, as it was portrayed in 2062, I think it's going to pale in comparison to what we're going to have. Okay, well, that was episode 59. No, I'm not liking that number either. 
To get an analysis of this episode or any other show, just go to iotinc.com slash podcasts. And remember, there's a hyphen between the IOT and the ink. Now, if you have an opinion on these type of high-level shows, good or bad, just let me know. It's what got us here. Now, the next episode will be with the CTO of San Francisco on smart cities. So the show will be back in its, I guess, its older format. Now, I could use your help if you've been enjoying the show and think it's been providing some value, then you could help me by suggesting it to a friend or by leaving a review on iTunes. That's the best way to suggest it to a lot of friends. You have to go to the iTunes app and you can either click a five-star review if that's how you feel or take a few minutes and write something up. I read every single one of them and I really appreciate them. I'm your host, Bruce Sinclair. Thank you for listening. Until next time, may your path to IoT business be a comfortable one. You have been listening to the IoT Inc. Business Show.